Look guys, excited isn't the word. I'm here at Watmore Farm. I'm waiting for Mike to turn up. I've thrown two handfuls of ground bait in. I've gone back to the car. I'm literally, look, here's the camera bag. I'm not even fishing. I just thought, what's that swirl on the surface? I look over the edge of my swim. Two carp in there. I don't know whether you're going to see them. I can't believe they've come in this quickly. I just looked. I'm not going to go in fast. And I actually saw the tail swirl on the surface. Let's check Mike's swim out here. Yes, 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 I see this well, I see the fish's tail. Oh my God. Look, are you gonna see these? I'm gonna hide behind this dock, dock leaf. I don't know whether you're gonna see me. Oh, so bad. Look at these fish dig, man. Now, that's what I saw, that little ripple. There they are. Whew, sweating. I feel a bit nerve wracking when it's like this. Like 50 years of fishing, and because I can see the fish right at my feet, I have trouble tying knots, do you get that? I have trouble tying knots, threading the rods up. It's sad really, but I mean that's why I go fishing. You think after 50 years of fishing, gazillions of different fish, including all the huge sharks and marlin, that I would still get excited seeing a fish that, it's not a monster, but it's just the fact you can visually see it 12 inches out. It's a good job I still get the shakes, I think that's what it's all about. I said they were going to switch on about 4 o'clock usually here at Watmore Farm. Definitely, from, from the past, look at it. Look at the state of that reel. Still works, eh? Still working. Let's say we got the fish. Yeah, I was just saying, yeah, they, they tend to sort of switch on a bit in, in the evening. But as soon as I arrive, generally on Totally Awesome, is the way it works is I arrive, sometimes a bit later. And the weather changes. The weather changes and the fishing goes rubbish. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, me and Dad always joke about it, that whenever I turn up, the fishing gets really tough. But thankfully now... You've been seeing them really in close, though. Yeah. They've just they've been, been a bit twitchy, haven't they've they? They've been feeding right here about two feet out. Um, after that, it's just they weren't taking it. They were here, but they just weren't taking it. But it's hit that four o'clock mark. And uh, we, I've noticed one went right while well, I missed another take. And this one, thankfully. It's going well. Yeah. I like these quiver tip rods because they just bend. Absolutely fold over, don't they? Oh, he's gone again. He pinged off. God, it's not. Look at the pullings today. So, uh, what's the comments? Uh, <laughs> you can't well, use it, can you? Yeah. You can't say it. You really want to, but you can't say it. <laughs> yeah, we're a family-friendly show, so... Yes, that's it. So I'll switch oh, yeah. off and we'll go. Well, after we got Mike set up there, we had a couple of fish hooked up. I mean... That is beyond belief, really in close like that. But what I'm going to be doing is fishing for roach, not with maggots, not with worms, but with, wait for this, sultanas. Because the last time I fished with sultanas for carp down here, I noticed they were absolutely hammering the life out of them. So they must like the sweet taste. I mean, whether it's like that sort of Scopex stuff that we used to use for bream, which I think is a sort of sweet one. Um, maybe it's that that's doing it. But what I'm going to be using is 13 foot match rod, a small reel of indeterminate age and vintage. And the line is probably even more of a vintage, but it'll do. I think I've used it for a bit of everything. Mackerel spinning off the shore, this one. Now, I've already had a bit of a dabble and had a couple of roach, but that was on the normal size waggler. I think they're too heavy. I'm getting lots of bumps and you see the float and it, and it does this. It wasn't really going under. So what I've done is change across now to a very ancient, I think it's a Billy Macon Canel Grey, I think it's called. I think Dave Roberts of Old Berry Hill told me that. It's almost a collector's piece. It's certainly about 40 years old, this one. And a little bulbous body here. It's a waggler, but very, very well, ultra-sensitive. I've got one of those rubber sleeves there so that I can take it off and change floats should I want to, but I don't think I'm going to need to. A locking shot either side. And then, I don't want to go too deep. It's quite deep here, what more, but I'm, I'm down to... That's three feet. I'm about three feet deep. I've got, I think, a number eight shot there. And I've got hooked nylon here. Small hook. I think it's about 14 or 16 barbless. Now, I think, personally, by cutting the sultanas in half or even thirds, because a raisin is smaller than a sultana, maybe, maybe in retrospect, I should have bought some raisins. But I feel seeing these getting attacked when I was carp fishing with the sultanas, I mean, surely these roach are going to go for them. I just have the feeling that if you have some big roach in there, let's say half pound or a pound, really you know, decent sized roach, it might be the way to avoid the small fish 
and target the bigger ones. You see how I cut it in half and put it on the hook. Okay, here's the sultanas, as you can see. They're quite a big bait, but for decent sized roach, half pound to a pound, they'll be fine. Now they're slightly elongated. I don't know if you can see that there. They are, I'll hold it that way. You'll be able to see slightly elongated. So I'm gonna try some cut crossways, like that. Use two halves of that. And some of the longer ones, I feel, because you can you can squeeze these into shapes. Look, you can roll them, they're soft. Sultana's a very soft fruit used in cake making. I'm gonna get my scissors, I'm gonna cut long ways like that. Now there, that one, it's still tacky, and I can roll that and make almost, I feel, as, 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 well, what, maggot size? I suppose that's maggot size there. Gonna get it on the hook, give it a go, and let's see if we can't get some of these roach on sultanas. I've made up a bit of a mix. Screttings two mil pellets, a bit of horse feed, some raisins obviously in there as well with it. And for roach fishing, you don't want great big gobs of ground bait. You just want a little pinch, hard to describe it. Almost a pellet size. I'm gonna go about two rod lengths out. Might be a bit too far because there's a little bit of air movement and ripple there today. Three or four of these, because there's raisins in there as well. <laughs> They're boiling on it already. And then follow up with my soft rolled out maggot-like raisin. Thread it. I think I could go even smaller. And the float is going to follow up. So what you're going to do really is, I've got the bail arm open ready to cast. I'm going to do a really wussy girl's throw with my left hand. Pinch up a pellet of bait, ground bait. Oh, lovely. Out it goes, straight into it, and then just wait. Can't really put the rod down because, oh, because I looked at the camera and missed the bite. Let's try again. Raisin's gone though. So with roach fishing, you definitely, of what you've got to call dot the bites, you've got to nail them pretty fast. So. Put the other half of that raisin on there, uh, sultana on there. I think raisins will be better because they're smaller, but we're gonna, we're gonna go with sultanas. I do love a nice experiment. Oh man, they're bumping the float straight away. And that small shot will just let it sink down. Hopefully the slightly bigger roach will be a little bit deeper. Oh, missed him again, right. But obviously, liking this little float or I am because I'm seeing much better bites I think I might have to just cut that half of a raisin sultana down again where is they coming up for the ground bait there's a flurry of activity on the surface and then you get the bite after that flurry clears then another go still see fish moving just under the surface, that's better. <laughs> two camera guys, two camera, here he comes, here he comes, he don't fall off. There we go, now you saw me cast out with a sultana, look folks, I do love it when a plan comes together. <coughs> Hold still, you wouldn't last three minutes in a pipe water wiggling around like that. There is my sultana there, there is my roach, yes we know it's not a very big roach but just by getting a delicate presentation and rolling that sultana up to look like a maggot, smaller, I had a feeling to get it in the keep net, see if I get a few I'll be able to show you at the end of the day, you know I'm not just catching the same fish over and over again. Pinch of ground bait, not a lot with roach fishing, not a lot, just a little nip there and not too tight, wussy girls throw. Straight into old man, cast to heaven that was. Boiling around it, there's the float getting knocked. I'm going to get premature, I think they're actually hitting the shot as well. <laughs> Two in a row on camera. That's not going to happen very often, I know. There we go. Oh, he's fallen off, but it just goes to show you. Let's get that kitty in the heat net. If I was in a match, everyone goes in. I don't match fish, I have no interest in the gambling side of it. I think all matches would be real fun if they took the pool's money and the prize money out of it. 
wonder how many we go match fishing then. But match fishing does get very, very good techniques, no question of that. Right, I'm away. I'm going to see if I can stockpile a little catch for you. Oh, by the way, I have got a cardboard down the inside, just in case. Guys, this is what I've been after. Look, a really, really nice roach. Dear, I think I'll take a gamble and swing it. He's got a bit of weed on him. Oh, tangled up. There he is. Nice roach. Shows that they have sultanas. They probably eat anything, but they do like, I feel, the sweetness of those sultanas. In the net you go. Now, I've already noted that a whole sultana can be taken by a roach, a big roach, you know, half a pound, something like that. But for regular fish, you need a smaller one. As I said, maybe I should have gone to raisins, but I'm cutting the sultana down, and I just realised, hang on, they make a very nice shape, like a black maggot. And also, another tip, because the inside is sticky, it does this. By taking the sultana, and they're quite stretchy, you can actually pull them along a bit, just snipping them in one, two or three pieces, and then just giving them a bit of a roll, like that. And you can see those, hopefully. They turn into, look at this. These, do they not look like sort of stretched brown maggots? Now those have been getting me more bites than anything else and more actual contact with the fish. But because these are also sticky inside, I've found I've been doing this. Get some dry ground bait. Now there's pellets mixed in with this anyway, but I really want fine ground bait there. Let's say, pull some of those regular coarse pellets just in there. And if I, Hope you can see this. Let's get that one out. If I get one of these sultanas, cut it in half, right? And just before I put it on the hook, if you can see that, just give it a little bit of a dry coat in there, squeeze it. It picks up bits of particles of ground bait. I can then, he says, looking frantically for his hook. There it is. Just put the hook through once. Just like putting a maggot on the hook. And then when that hits the water, we well could put two on actually, there's no reason why well, you couldn't use a double one, you know, but I'm just using it to, to illustrate to you at the moment. This is what I've been doing. This is not about saying this is the world's best bait. This is just saying here is another bait. Have you tried it? And there, I'm gonna zoom right in on that. You should be able to see that okay. Those particles of ground bait, as soon as that hits the water, it comes off, and that seems to bring the roach further up. They nibble away at those little bits, and then they find either a single or a double sultana. Now let's get back to the fishing. It's obviously working. And don't forget, why not give some of these wacko baits a bit of a try? If they're good enough for human consumption, they're certainly good enough for the fish to eat. Guys, I could keep going and going with these sultanas, but Mike's packing up. I've had nothing on the carp, but I've done pretty well on the roach. On the number side, I'll just show you what I caught. This is just in an afternoon on the float. Roach, I've also had run in here. I don't know whether I'm going to be able to show you the difference between the two, because they probably go everywhere. They're all fresh. Straight out the net. Brilliant bit of sport there, guys. That's not bad for a bit of float fishing, is it? A little bit of action there. Sultanas. And there we have a roach somewhere. I had a nice rud as well. Now, that's the two. If you get the camera in close, you can see the difference between the two. The rud is on the top. Got a much redder tail and the roach is on the bottom. That gives you an idea between the two. But you can see there, some really nice quality roach. Plenty of them, all going over my lap, all about to be returned. Oh, there's a nice roach. Oh, there's, there's a rud. That's the rud I was looking for. Nice little pair of rud there. Don't forget to watch our totally awesome outdoor show as well. And I'm gonna put this beautiful lot of fish back in the water. 
Well, guys, it's happened. I'm down to my last few raisins and I've got a carp hooked up on a tiny hook. It could be a bit one-sided, I don't know. Mike's just gone home, showed you the picture of all those roach and some rud. It'd be nice to close out with a carp. I'm not on the right reel. I want to have these at drag. Tiny hook and a nice big common. It's probably going to pop me. Yeah, I say this is a one-way ticket, guys. I don't think I've got that much line on the reel. Oh, yeah. I remember that. I loaded that in 1968. Some good stuff. Back then. Match rods. I love big fish on a match rod. Don't, I really honestly don't think I'm going to get this fish in. You put so much pressure on with a tiny little... 16 hook. This is the oldest reel, the oldest line I've got in my entire tackle box. It was indeed an inevitable outcome. Quite what I've lost, I don't know. I'd say you popped me off on that hook then. No, I got the hook back, it just pulled. Oh well, at least you saw the roach. I may have mentioned that I have caught carp on Sultanas once before. I've got another one hooked up. How long is this going to stay on? Oh man. It's stilled off perfectly and I was rather hoping to get some roach. Sometimes they say, you know, oh, sometimes they say you should get a bit of reel. Sometimes they say, with a roach, if you tip a net full of roach back, like Breen, it puts a hole in the shoal down. Well, it might put the shoulder roach off. <laughs> it's pulled the carp on big time. Now, it's just dusk. It's just that time when they come around hoovering up. And obviously, little and often, with those sultanas going in all the time, starting to pay dividends. They've homed in on, basically. I've got to watch all this rushes and stuff on the left. He gets in there, it's a one-way ticket. This one does not want to roll over and die. Yes, not bad for a float caught sultana fish. I oh, might put the mat away as well. I really was going home. This really is a close out fish. Once you've still got a rod in the water, I've still got a rod in the water. Now calm down, I'm going to show you to the camera. This is what you can also catch float fishing with sultanas. Lovely jubbly. Let's get it back. Another success story for the totally awesome fishing show. Fancy Mike going home just when those fish come on the bite. Just look at that lump there, guys. That has to be every bit. 12 plus, 14, I don't know. Big, big old fish. And that was on the free lining rod. Took the BB off it, slow sinking. I thought, I wonder if the roach would take this. Uh, no, carper moved in big time. That's the end of the roach fishing. I've really got to go home. What a fantastic trip. All those roach and some rud and a lump like this around about 13 pounds. What a way to finish. Later. Don't know what to say, guys. I really, it's beyond belief. It is. 11 pounds, one ounces. Another one. There we go. I mean, I know those sultanas are loved by the carp, but just get real, slow sinking, no float, not legend, just on the drop, watch the line tweak, bam. Wham, bam, thank you, carp. 10.13. 10.13. Just show you quickly. What can I say? Well, a trip, or what, this is the best roach trip I've ever had. A net of roach and three double figure carp. It's got to be time to go home. Thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. And I'll tell you what, don't miss the next roach fishing film I make. Anything could happen. Let's get this guy back. <laughs>